Merry late Christmas! <laughs> okay, hi everyone. I'm Elliot. Welcome back to Hush Hush. It has been far too long for the next episode to come out. But, um. I don't have my Sonic plush with me, so, um. Might as well go solo, right? Make this a late Christmas present for everyone. But, um, I accepted a request to, uh. A second Bonneville Day. Yada yada yada, you know the deal. <laughs> but uh, let me see who's uh, that sounds really wrong. Ba ba da ba ba da beep ba da boop. Quill is up next. July 12th is a big one because uh, we're gonna need 14,000 and I'm only 8,000 away. Quite under 8,000, like 7. Point nine eight. I don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah. July tenth, go to the park, and um, yeah. Let's just see what happens. The music is being played right now. This is just me. Oh shit! It all just so on vlog. Captain Slog, number 788. <laughs> you arrive at the park, it's, it's, and it's relatively busy. People are throwing frisbees, having picnics, and overall just enjoying the warm weather. Walking over to the fountain, you see Elle sitting by herself on a bench, with a small flock of birds already flitting about close to her feet. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the animated water fountain. <laughs> Make our way over to her. Cautious not to disturb the birds. Because it's the word. You overhear Elle speaking to the feathered crow. And pause before interrupting her. <laughs> I'm so happy you like the bird seed I brought. But please do share. I see a few of you back there too nervous to get closer. Beep. I made sure not to get the kind with red millet this time. I didn't realize it was so unpopular. None of you even ate a morsel. I do the same thing with coleslaw. I'm not sure if it's the word slaw or the fact that it tastes like sad cabbages, but I have never cared for it. Here you are. Another handful. <laughs> I'm no bird myself, but I would love to get closer to. Mind if I sit here? Oh, hello! It's good to see you. Ail stands to greet me. And manages a small curtsy before gesturing to the bench, she's bench seat next to her. Good God, I can't read. I'm so happy you showed up. I love the company. How wonderful that you can make it! I know feeding the birds is quite literally for the birds, but I enjoy it. The only problem is that the birds aren't quite the conversationalists you might imagine. I informed them of all the latest news I've heard, but they rarely reciprocate. I suppose you could say they're a little... bird-brained. <laughs> ah yes, small. Two bird puns in ten seconds. Sounds like oh my Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of time to think them up, so don't be jealous. Oh, okay. Here, take a handful. Try not to rain it down right on their heads. They get grouchy, and I can't say I blame them. So how is your vacation going? Are you enjoying your time in Subrosa so far? Present company included, best time ever. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I feel the same. Just for warning, this is a new microphone I have. So I have an automatic mute button, so I can block out any sounds from behind me. Turn up the gain a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I have TV remote on standby, so that I... Uh, 
don't get those fuckers into my room watching me play this. Wouldn't it be funny if I was just playing Yahoo? <coughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the the thing I'm thinking about. I reaches into her bag of bird seed and whistles a friendly hello, hello to the birds, hoping perhaps you won't notice her blush with her attention turned away. Now gently tosses another handful of seeds. Somehow you can't help but notice how delicate and careful she is. The birds really do get much closer to her than anyone else. A stellar jay gives you the evil eye when you offer him a sunflower seed, but gladly hops to Elle's feet when she dishes them out. She seems so wistful watching them that for a moment you wonder if perhaps she's fallen asleep. Can I ask you a weird question? Actually, never mind. It's silly. You're gonna ask me anything, Elle. Yes, I suppose I could. I feel like you would take any question I ask seriously, and that's a nice feeling. In the end, I try not to be serious, <clears throat> but I sound like I do. I don't know. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to be a bird? And I don't mean just flying. Or eating worms, in case you get hung up on that. I mean, being so free, you couldn't even understand the alternative. So free. To be able to dart away and fly to safety. To wake up not sure where you might go or what you might eat. To be at the mercy of storms and snow and everything that might find you a tasty meal. But never worrying. Never regretting, just being a bird. Sounds like just being human. Do you ever wonder if that would be better? Or if that would be a sort of loss of yourself? Uh. In case that was too weird, pretend I asked you about wool. Blankets. <laughs> wow, well, if you don't wonder what it's like being someone else, you might not see what you are. That's right. That's a big thought. Too big for a bench. Too big for now. <laughs> the chickadees are my favorite, by the way. Oh. Just in case you were wondering. <gasps> Alright. You and I'll spend the better part of an hour tossing bird seed to grateful birds. After which, Elle folds a empty plastic bag of seed and puts it delicately in her purse. Thank you for spending this time with me. I enjoyed it very much. Pleasure was all mine. Well, certainly not all. I can promise you. Yeah. Time for me to go. But I hope we can do this again. Elle gets a slightly awkward look of expectation. She steps closer to you, but it's obvious she's unsure of just how to say goodbye. Yay. 
He stepped forward and embraced Elle, her hug in return is long and affectionate. She breathes deep and sighs into you, my- oh boy. Take care. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Goodbye. Elle heads to the bus stop and you head back to your car. Go to the cafe. Why not? When you walk in, you notice Dimitri is on the phone. Then I said to him, if you love it so much, why don't you marry it? I kind of forgot about all the dialogue, so it's going to take a little bit used to it. There may be new ones, so let's see. Of course, that marriage would be illegal in most states. Still, the heart wants what it wants. Hey, same-sex marriage has been legal for like oh, just a little while. Thank you. Thank you, America. <laughs> I wish him all the best anyway. I have to go. I have a customer. Hello. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the best coffee place in all of Sabrosa. My sister is away at the moment, but I would be very pleased to make your order. What can I get for you today? Five bucks? Get out of here. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing right now. Thanks. Sounds good. Let me know if you change your mind. No, seriously, I'm good. <laughs> I do oh, hello. Go to the cafe. Okay. Let's go back! <laughs> As you arrive at the key, Queen Bee Cafe doesn't look especially busy. There are a handful of people seated at, at the tables outside. Bleh. But the inside is practically empty. You push the door open, and are immediately greeted by Dimitri. Who throws his arms open as he's about to give you a hug. Ah, Cyrano has returned. The great lover and poet is back to share with us flirtatious wisdom. Yay. Lotus, come out here. It is time for another lesson in love. Oh, wow. How long has that been? Like, oh, Jesus, has it been like, been September? Holy fuck. <laughs> Lotus appears from the kitchen. Dimitri, I told you 73 times. Do not ask for help with my love life. I know I was 73 because I get track on the chalkboard. Look at all these little stick counters. I can't oh, count. Lotus, 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 Lotus. Surely you do not want to pass up a chance to find love. Please, Lotus. Think of the love. Oh wow. I take it things didn't work out with you and... No. I don't want this. Oh, but they did. But Lotus was afraid to continue the chase. Hmm. Nim is sweet. And we had a great time. But... I'm not sure if he's the one for me. Oh! I'm sharing my personal life. Look at what you made me do, Dimitri! Please, sister. Just one more harmless crash course. And then we shall award our friend with delicious coffee. And no one is hurt. I'm pretty sure it's my pride that'll be hurt. Not to mention the embarrassment. Aha! She did not say no! Let's let the love teaching begin. Yay! Oh gosh. Alright, next customer who comes in, you must flirt with Lotus. Our lovely friend Serrano will signal you important love wisdom if you get stuck. 
I could be named Serrano. Why not? <laughs> you will be successful if you can secure the person's phone number. Sound good? Do you have to make my personal life sound like a competitive sport? Maybe. Ah, but Lotus, it is so exhilarating. I think it is perfect. You want to ban me, will you? Lotus, put your trust in me. I shall not let you down. Oh, ah, uh, thanks. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Just then, the front door opens and a customer walks in. A girl with white hair. Oh, I know who that is. The girl is incredibly attractive with large breasts, barely contained by a bikini top, jean shorts, rolled down to the top of her thigh. Lotus begins sickening me frantically to you that this is a bad idea. Dimitri gives you the thumbs up. This is Kali. She too is well known for her flirtatious ways. Oh, baby. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Hola! Aloha! And hello! Welcome to the Clean Bean Coffee House! I remember that line. Is there anything I can get for you? Can't take your phone. <coughs> Darling? The girl puts both arms on the display case and starts eyeballing the small desserts. Um. I don't know. I need sugar. Mm, I need to eat something sweet before I die. Have you got anything that can save my life? Like, something that'll blow my hair back? Oh, well, actually, a lot of our desserts are top-notch. We make most of them ourselves, and some are from a local baker who's phenomenal. Do you have a preference? Well, I definitely have a thing for caramel. That's... that's good! I... Signal for her to... Oh. Well, um... I think we have caramel available. If... You want some on a dessert? Heck yes! That and a little whipped cream. Oh my god. Well, I can only you imagine like banana what it bread? Like. That one is my personal favorite. Oh, I like them all, sweetheart. Bananas, peaches, whatever kind of fruit you've got. <laughs> Melons. <laughs> Jesus. Ugh. What do I do? Oh, that's good! I also like those things. Ding, there you go. Hey, look at us! We've got so much in common. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me check out those desserts in the back. Which ones are we talking about? The lean... Sensor. Lotus gives you a pained look, but closes her eyes in determination. We, um, we also have milk, if you like, to go with dessert. I'm surprised that her actual ones are not, like, you know, out, so. What's that thing for me? Yay. The girl looks at Lotus, then down her own breast and smiles. Oh. Milk sounds lovely. Alright, I've decided. I'd like a chocolate muffin with caramel sauce. Ring it up! Yes, of course! Will that be all? I think so. Unless you've got any other recommendations? Oh, uh... Uh, no. Here you are. That'll be four dollars. Four bucks? Get out of here. Here's 
a fiver. Keep the change. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Oh, this person's right as a stuff. Her next sentence hurts to say. Do you think I could, uh, get your number? The girl smiles, she licks her muffin, and then gets a plate. She, then she reaches over to the till and takes a pen and writes something on the napkin. You bet, babe. Give me a call sometime. I, I'll try. I mean, I will. Cool. See you around. <laughs> the girl takes a bite of her muffin and locks out with a nose we start to shred. After the girl is gone, Lotus lets out a relieved sigh and Dimitri rushes in to hug her. Lotus, you did it! You flirted with a customer who was very flirty back. Oh my gosh, my heart is racing! That was so crazy! Crazy, I say! Crazy! Your suggestions kept sounding crazy to me, but, well, they worked. I don't know if she was quite my type, but she was pretty attractive. I can tell you one girl who's more attracted than Kelly. <laughs> oh yes, she was trouble, but she knew it and she brought enough to share. I thought that's a stare for a moment. Even though that was insane! I actually have fun. So, thanks for your help. You did great, Lotus. I gave you crazy suggestions. Oh my god. I gave you crazy suggestions because I knew it didn't matter. She was into you. Lotus goes to say something and says, she only smiles and nods. Here. To thank you, I will make you a cup of my Super Brew Supreme. Uh, where's the coffee? It's not here. Fuck! I think you'll find it more stimulating than our house blend. Lotus goes into the back, then hands you a to-go cup. Oh, you are in for a treat, my friend. Thank you. Okay, but we have to get ready for the rush, Dimitri. And it's your turn to clean the grinders. Trust me, Lotus. I am an expert at grinding. Don't be weird. As you wish. Oh, wow. Take care and make sure to visit us again. Yeah. Yeah. You take a drink and yeah! Look at that. Evening. Ooh, you hey, hey, hey! Drop everything. Here's a text from Eli. Look, I've got a favor to ask. I've got a super boring day coming up at work, and I want your help to pass the time. We're getting dressed up, dressed down, dressed in dresses, whatever floats your yacht. Interested? It'll be so much more fun with you here. You busy thir Thursday the 11th in the evening? Mm -hmm. Oh, it says phone alpha. Okay. Beep. What, what can I say about Eli? Eli. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I got plans for you, Buckaroo. We're going to have some major fun. See you then. Bye. Enjoy peace and quiet as I get away from here for a little bit. I actually enjoy these few messages of announcements I want to do in the future. Goodbye. Uh, well, I'll be right back. Not goodbye, but you know what I mean. Quill. Oh, shit. Let me find it again. <laughs> Alright, so. 
Uh, I made a little bit of a fucky wucky because uh, I got a new phone as of uh, the recent. But uh, the new one had to be turned in and uh, because it's having some shitty problems. I deleted some of the photos. I didn't think some of the hush hush ones would be deleted. So, uh, that's, that is absolutely infuriating because, uh, I need the guy to, uh, complete this game and go for all a plus, 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 plus. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we're on. Um... Alright, go to the park, ignore everything. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go to home. That's where I'm at. Oh, that looks nice. You arrive at home that evening, completely wiped out. It is until you reach the front door that you recall Quill mentioning something about plans tonight. You crack the front door open, waiting to see if a herd of gerbils or something rushed out, rushes out. Instead, only a strange, pleasant smell greets me. As you enter the house, the smell of lemon and cinnamon, cinnamon hits you like a scented candle shoved up my nose. You peek into the kitchen and see Nicole standing is standing there, holding holding a cup of tea. Various cups of dishware are set out, including a teapot. There's also several stuffed animals and a sock puppet. Now that is, now that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call kawaii. <laughs> Quill, Quill's eyes light up when she sees you. She sips delicately at her tea, as though pretending you just to just to have just noticed you, and smiles. Oh, hello! I didn't hear you come in. Nice day, isn't it? Nice day for a tea party. I wanted to make you something really special. To thank you for being so nice to me. So I made you a tea cozy out of an old tea cozy. <sighs> tea. But then I realized that you need a teapot for a tea cozy. Luckily, I found one in your neighbor's kitchen. Huh? There you go. So I made you super special tea. And put in every tea bag I could find in the house. It's very strong flavored, which means it's good. Would you care for some company with your cup of tea? Any choice? Third choice is funny if you listen to it. Did you say you stole from my neighbor? No, I didn't say that, silly. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I said, oh hello, I didn't hear you come in. Nice day, isn't it? Nice day for a tea party? And then a bunch of other stuff I forgot. Here, have some tea. Here, have a seat. I found this one over there. You can have it. Let me introduce you to our guest. This is his lordship, the Earl of Jam. That's Mrs. Buttertump. And that handsome fellow is a sock I glued eyeballs to. I call him Sock. Because that's what he is. <laughs> okay. Sugar, would you like one lump or two? I would offer you milk, but it mysteriously disappeared today. Over several hours. The word lump is so advertising, I'll take two. Oh yes, very much so. I've chewed on my fair share of mystery lumps. It's a surprise every time. <laughs> so now we make small talk. I'm not sure how it works, but I imagine we must talk like we're really small. <laughs> I'll go first. 
Oh no! I can't reach that box on the counter! How will I? Banana! Colossus! Mostly a tiny, buzzy sound. Psh, 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 and there were four of them! <laughs> okay, your turn! Whisper incoherent nonsense. But... I'm right clicking and it makes that noise. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Whisper incoherent nonsense. Close eyes that up and she sets up. Her pupils dilate in a happy smirk shrugged. Smirk tugs at her lips. I can't read, still. Why, thank you. That's very flattering of you to say. I feel the same way about you. In the end, nonsense does things in the end. You haven't sipped your tea. Make a sip, but confidently. You sip in, in, at the insanely strong tea, which tastes of, which tastes of lemon, cinnamon, jasmine, chai, and mint. Raced for the taste, you manage to drink, drink it while keeping a smile. Cool smiles and her eyes sparkle in, f in the fluorescent light. She sips her own tea and the money. Momentary silence is comfortable. What's that, Sock? Oh yes, I'll ask them. Sock was wondering where you get your business. He's thinking about getting into business himself, but is not sure where to get some. Is there a business store? Reach into your pocket and pull out whatever is there. Recently, I just rewatched the Polar Express, and uh, yeah, I can I can understand where this reference comes from. You have a strong feeling that you should reach into your back pocket. As you do, Cole tenses up. There's a moment you can see fear and distrust in your eyes. In your pocket, you pull out a business card. It's a card you were given in the package you received when you won the contest. On it, it says Kitty Cottage. There's a picture of a very fat and happy kitty face. Oh. You hand over the card to Quill and tell her it's a business card. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> Well, I'm doing good. No dark karma, please. So, I would like to play a game, but you, as my guest, get to help choose the rules. It's called The Most You Know. The most I know is nothing. We each get to ask a question, and everyone must answer or lose their tea party privileges. I'm sorry the rules are so harsh. The only rule is, you have to ask the questions like this. What is the most blank you know? Then everyone answers! Would you like to play? This sounds like fun. Yay! Willing participants make the game a lot more fun and less illegal. <laughs> less illegal, okay. As the oldest person here, Mrs. Butterdump gets to go first. What is your question, Mrs. B? Who says that the doll called Mrs. Butterdump? Which is neither female nor seemingly related to butter in any way. Quill nods several times, then looks at me expectantly. Oh, sorry, I'll translate. Mrs. B asked, what is the most adorable thing you know? I know one thing, but I'm not saying it out loud. My answer is that kitties are sometimes born with extra toes. This is called polydactylism. It makes them look like they have mittens on, and it means they have extra beans. It's the best thing ever. Ha ha ha. Crow looks, at, looks to Sock and laughs at his answer. Then she looks to the Earl of Jam and scrunches her nose at his. Then she looks at 
me. Ugh, quill. <laughs> Getting tired. That's why I have Dr. Pepper. The furry tufts on the inside of the cat's ears are called ear furnishing. Oh my god! I didn't know that! I didn't know a cute thing about kitties! <laughs> That's good to know that you learned a thing. This is the best day of my life! Yay! Yay! Okay, Sock, it's your turn. Sock. I have Sock. Balancing it on my forehead is not gonna, or face, that's not gonna do anything. Mm. He asked, what's the most delicious thing you know? Delicious. Oh, Sock, always thinking with your tummy. Classic Sock. My answer is fish cakes, and I'll have you know that's a universal answer consistent across all timelines. After a brief pause listening to Earl's and Mrs. B's answers, Quill looks at you. Thank God I don't have any dark karma. I am a partial. I am partial to cream-based desserts, preferably the. Oh. Quill's face is... Quill's face blushes red, bright red. She puts her hand on her chest in surprise and remains quiet for a short time. Blinking. That was a weird answer. I think it was a compliment. Thank you. You're welcome. I suppose I sort of agree. My baths are usually very enjoyable. Though I'm not sure when you've gotten a chance to taste me. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a fun game. <sighs> It's the Earl's turn. He's asking what's the most metal thing you know. Metal. I think my answer is tigers! Tigers are metal. I would love to be a tiger for a day. Crow looks at... Crow looks to you. Vacuum. <laughs> Cucumbers. I changed my answer. I changed my answer! Oh my goodness, my heart is racing now. I don't think I did very good that round. Quill goes right. She takes a sip of her tea and then puts it down on the saucer. She takes a deep breath and looks at you hesitantly. For a moment, she sits in silence, slowly and softly blinking her eyes until she finally nods at you. Okay, your turn for a question. What's the most dangerous thing you know? Quill closes her eyes and scrunches up her face. She shakes her head several times as though disagreeing with herself, her hands tightening to her fists. Wah! She makes a growly cat sound for finally burning out her answer without looking at you. Knowing something you're not supposed to is the most dangerous thing! Seeing something you weren't supposed to is the most dangerous thing! Seeing something you weren't supposed to. Huh! Sorry, that answer was very, very big, and it took a lot to lift it out of my head. Hmm. But please don't tell me when I said so. It's a secret. I'm only telling you guys because you're my friends. My friend! Please from the name of Police! Open up! I'm fucked. Oh, there's a doorbell here. You make your way to the f to the you know, the doorbell rings. You make your way to the front door and look outside. You see a detective you spoke to last week standing outside. She has a stern expression, and you get the distinct feeling your front door may not survive a legitimate shoulder shoulder check from her. Oh. You, Fumi. Hello, I'm Detective Fumi. We spoke previously. How could I forget? <laughs> Save your constitutionally protected flirting for someone else, bub. 
It's bud. B-U-D, bud, ma'am. You are currently renting this house from Cat's Meow Vacation Rentals, correct? Hmm. And you took possession of the property early last week? <sighs> oh, I want to see that option. Might be something terrible, but no, I'm not going to do it. Correct. She got you some words onto a notepad. Did you have any contact with the previous tenant? Did you exchange information at all, or did they relinquish the keys for the property to you? It's probably me. No, I just arrived at the place. Was ready for me. So the place was clean and ready for your arrival on Monday the first. Monday, Monday, Monday! No, wait, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Jesus Christ, she scratched more notes on her notepad. Just a few more questions. Did the previous tenant leave behind any property or forwarding contact information? Oh, any choice. And have you noticed any unusual or suspicious persons frequenting the property? Define unusual or suspicious. Unusual. Any person who rises to the level of notability in your immediate surroundings. That'd be a sibling. <laughs> a child on a bike? Not unusual. A person dressed as a koala for no apparent reason? Unusual. Suspicious. A person who appears to be engaged in atypical, potentially criminal behavior. Oh, I'm not a criminal. Old person walking their dog. Not suspicious. Dog walking a person. Suspicious. <laughs> uh, that's suspicious, but funny. Um, do a... By those definitions, I haven't seen either. I see. She scratches some additional noise on her notepad. Very well. And that's all for now, then. I'm highly certain we'll be speaking again soon. Okay. The detective turns and walks to her car in a marked black sedan. She doesn't look back and make eye, and make eye contact as she leaves. After a few minutes, you go to the bedroom and find Quill hiding under your bed. Is she gone? Yes, it's safe to come out. Thank you for not telling her I was here. I was worried I would have to scratch her to make her go away. And I don't like doing that. I'm also glad I didn't need to run outside. I don't feel like being an outdoor kitty right now. I think our tea party is over. But I had a wonderful time. Except for the part when the mean lady came and scared me. It was nice talking to you. You make me feel better when we talk. That's a special gift to have. Regender and scratch your ear. That feels so good. Thank you. That's another special gift you have. Yeah. All right. I better say goodnight. I need to go run around downstairs on all the furniture for a little while for no reason. Oh, Jesus. Good night, friend. Friend. Yeah. Alright. Oh shit. Oh no, don't tell me. That's Okay, whew, I had the others up. <laughs> uh, oh shit, I don't have that, but I'm good for now. <laughs> um, balls, okay. Touch. July 
this. So that you're like this. Tenth. Night. Oh. Bing. Bing. The events of the day. Day play over and over in your mind. How long can you keep up juggling so many love interests? Tis the new day. You awake to Caribbean limbo music. Your alarm clock has asked you. Your alarm clock asks you, how long can you go? You hit the snooze button a little too hard. Oops. Mud. Come over here. Bing. Is, oh. I guess we should do this one. Another hour long episode. Fuck me. Okay, bye. <laughs> Boom is where the heart is. Whew. My. So early when you hear the doorbell ring. You're still toweling off from a morning shower, but luckily, you're mostly dressed. I am dressed. The sound of the doorbell sends Quill racing down to the basement. The last time she made you that, she made that trip, you didn't hear her for a few hours. You feel reasonably sure she'll stay out of sight, so you toss your towel into the laundry basket and open the front door. Bonnabelle is there. She's holding a four, full armload of mixing bowls and various bacon ingredients. Her face lights up in a broad smile when she sees me. Morning, sugar. I have to tell you. You've got just the sweetest little rose bushes out front. I dare say the flowers are almost strawberry blonde. Thank you. Give us a kiss. I was thinking about you all morning, and I don't feel like imagining it no more. Cool. <laughs> Bonnabelle manages to lean in and kiss both the, both my cheeks. Cool. Without jostling her surprise, she smells like cookies. <laughs> All right, sweetheart, why don't you show me to your kitchen? I got some dough proofing already, and we're ready for step two. Kitchen is this way. I've got an apron, too, but I don't look as good in it as you do. Well, obviously, darling. It takes years before you and your apron grow the trusted bond you need to truly shine together. Yeah. But in all honesty, I go through aprons like paper towels, and I'm usually scrambling to find nice ones that fit. I'll let you imagine why. Obviously. Gracious me, what a cute little house you've got. Thank you. This place has always caught my eye, but I've never found out who the owner is. There's always someone renting it short term. I've always wanted to ask them why there's so much Nipita Kataria growing out front. They've got bushels of it. There's quite a few... Odd characters in the neighborhood. It doesn't surprise me. Darling, this whole town is full of characters. I've lived here for years, and I'm still surprised on a daily basis. Oh, that's good to know. The two of you move to the kitchen, and Bonneville quickly takes over. She puts down her supplies and tools, and nods with satisfaction. Perfect little kitchen. Nice and tidy, too. Glad to see it. I'm hungry. So this morning, sugar, I'm going to treat you to some of my homemade Cinnabons. One of my mama's secret family recipes. No, it ain't Mary Bell. I was thinking of Mary Bell for a second. They're sisters. The secrets are lemon zest and buttermilk in the dough. But you did not hear that from me. <laughs> I closed down the bakery this morning for its monthly cleaning crew, so... For the next couple of hours, I'm your personal pastry chef. Sound good? I'm ready to help. It's always been my dream to be a baker's assistant. <laughs> well, that's just wonderful, Sugar. I'm so pleased I can be a part of this momentous moment in your life. Woo! Bonneville oils up the kitchen counter and gently needs a large 
a mound of dough for a few moments, then she begins to roll it flat for the rolling pin. So did things not work out with ale, sugar? I thought for sure I had noticed a sparkle in your eye with her. Oh shit, that's the hex entry, this! Um... What's... Uh, truth. I see. He or she must be really special then, I reckon. I wonder who. <laughs> Bonneville finds the dough and sprinkles a mixture of cinnamon and sugar all over it. Then, with obvious expertise, she rolls the dough into a long rope and cuts it into even sized pieces. She places the newly cut. I can't go on. And much more cinnamon bun shaped goods into a baking dish and covers them. Those will need to proof again for a while, so we got some time to kill. Here's where the recipes call for mimosas and charming company. Yeah! Okay, yeah, enough for, you know. Bottom of which is a bottle of orange juice and a bottle of champagne. What? what? Mm, okay. She pours you and herself a glass and reaches a cheers to me. Cheers to sweet summer adventures. Yeah. Cheers to socially acceptable morning drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sugar, if a gal can't help herself to a little sparkling OJ, there's something wrong in this world. I'm not even old enough to drink. But okay, whatever. After Shabal and a few more drinks, Bonneville grows more and more giggly and vivacious. <laughs> a few semi scandalous comments you make have her laughing. And softly, softly shoving you away, you become aware that she stands closer and closer each time. Her cheeks flush and her words are a little breathless. She smiles no knowingly at me. And then a timer goes off. You hear a ding! Oh, there we are! The buns are all proofed and ready to go into the oven. Let's not keep those little sweet darlings waiting. Bonneville runs across the kitchen, waving her hands out of the side to side. And you can't help but admire the way her breast bounds as she moves. Oh boy. Jesus. She puts the baking pans in, into the oven, sets a timer, she makes it in and closes it. Perfect. Now we just gotta give him about 30 minutes to get all poofy and good. Poof! I'll make the icing now while we're waiting. Do you mind handing me two cups of cream cheese? Oh, I mean two sticks. Two sticks. Chopsticks. I'll start sifting the sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Walk up behind her massage. Oh god, I might know what's going to be led into. <clears throat> Noticing Bonneville rubbing her own shoulder, you walk up behind her to start mas to massage her. Without missing a beat, she reaches back and pulls her hair out of your way, gladly accepting your kind gesture. Oh. That feels so good, baby. Oh shit. Her thumbs trace down her shoulder blades, and you realize that her whole back is tw is a twisted labyrinth of stress and tension. You discover her not and dig in with more ferocity, gripping and kneading with all, her all the strength your hands can bear. Oh yes, baby. <laughs> <coughs> I'm okay. Yeah, it's suddenly cramped from the screen. This is the most formidable knot you've ever encountered. Frantically scanning the kitchen for support, you spot Bonnabelle's rolling. Oh, wow. How about that to do? You reach over and grasp it, raising it into the air like a holy sword of tension slaying. You use rolling 
pin to attack the knight and Barnabel responds immediately. Hold on, stop the music. That's playing in the video. Let me sound. Your elbows, knees, and heels are somehow involved. It's a full body effort. The bowling pin nearly buckles under the pressure, but you finally feel all the muscles in Bonnabelle's neck finally release their tension. I have some of that. I need to stand, sit up straight or something these times. You're more than a little winded when, when you hear Bonnabelle sigh and utter rapturous relief. That was. The best massage I've ever had. Yeah. Now, I haven't exactly had a whole lot, but in terms of comparison, this was like nothing I've ever had before. Give her a bow and kiss her. Oh, okay. Bottle smiles as you draw closer for a kiss, and she gladly returns it. You share a whisper and a soft smooch for a, mo for a moment. She stares at you serenely. <laughs> Just fade in that face. Perfect. <laughs> it starts the two of us. Ooh, those are the buns. They've got to come out of the oven. Bonbo quickly duns her oven mitts and takes the delicious smelling chafing oven with practiced aplomb. As you salivate over the glorious bounty, Bonnabelle's phone beeps. She texts it and her smile fades instantly. Sugar, I just got a text from the cleaning crew. They said there's a situation down at the bakery. Something about a gas line. That's no good. Bonnabelle rushes to gas her open things and she rushes back to to me and kisses me. I've got to run after all, but well, thank you for everything. You're gonna have me walking funny for a few days. That was incredible. You are incredible. Make sure you finish the icing and don't let those buns go to waste. Thanks, love. See you again. Oh, I still got it. The door closes and you saunter into the kitchen. You take a moment to look up cream, cheese, icing, whip up a bash, and eat Cinnabons until you're absolutely stuffed. Then I miss a scene? But hey, I got still got with A+. Plus. Whatever. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Uh, I'm sorry, once again, that this has been... a while from the last episode i've been going for an hour and ten minutes so i'll quickly say this i'm gonna be starting a patreon sometime in the future so don't be too excited about anything just yet so um where are the details for it it'll come soon so thank you again everyone for watching like if you're why do i keep fucking up these intros Ow. Okay, thank you for all for watching. Bye. <laughs>